All right, welcome to Lightning Q&A with OA, where we interview somebody from our community. Today, I'm joined by Jake Hannon, the Senior Analytics Engineer at Sigma, and also the Instructor of Analytics Engineering with DBT at CoRISE. So, Jake, we are going to get right to it. We got three minutes. So, question number one for you. As an analytics engineer, you recently moved from a B2C company, GoPuff, to Sigma, a B2B company. What has been the experience? What's been the change? Uh, longer sales cycles, for sure. <clears throat> um, I think the biggest shift going from B2C to B2B is really the, the focus that your go-to-market team has. Uh, you know, the, most of the data is kind of still the same, uh, but what your operations team focuses on, what your marketing team focuses on is a little bit different. A um, lot more sales force this go around, which is always fun. And question number two. As a side job, you're an instructor at CoRISE's analytics engineering course. What aspects of analytics engineering are the hardest for people to learn? I'd say it's kind of a tough question to answer based on where you're coming from. I think what's cool about analytics engineering is people come from data engineering or analytics, analytics uh, really any background. Uh, so it kind of depends on where you're coming from. Ultimately, the biggest challenge in all of is never really the, the technical challenges. It's actually you know, working with your company and your organization to figure out how, how to best work with each other, um, how to keep folks informed of data priorities and things like that. So that's always the thing I've mentioned to folks is focus on people processes because uh, they're always harder to solve. <clears throat> people and process over the tactical stuff. For sure. Analytics engineering. I like it. And third question, what skill set or habit are you currently working on to become a better analytics engineer? I'd say what we're working on at Sigma is more of the automated processes, so a lot more in the CI, CD space, um, allowing folks to come into the repo. We let our engineering team in to our analytics repo um, to help with, you know, as they add new events and things like that. So really just setting up the infrastructure to support onboarding of new folks really easily, making sure that nothing breaks and we have a, a seamless workflow. All right. And the second to last question. Data professionals often deal with low usage and adoption uh, when they complete a stakeholder request. What do you do to ensure that your work brings value? Yeah, this goes back to the people and process thing, right? I think another big challenge is you've done all this great work <clears throat> and maybe you've shared it with that specific stakeholder, but then the rest of the org doesn't know. Um, we try to do things a little bit differently here, you know, especially with Sigma. We kind of think of our end product, like what I build is sort of the jumping off point. So I will make something that folks can just get started with. So that's been really great. And we also use Slack to kind of do release notes. Um, again, just more conversations you have and the, the more broadly that your message is shared rather than you know in a Slack DM or one specific email. Um, I found that to be very successful. Gotcha, okay. And last one, what personal project, this can be data or non-data, have you worked on recently? Uh, I've recently worked on better understanding my Spotify data. So. I've been a big fan of Spotify Wrapped um, and all the cool things that they share. So I have, for the past two years, been recording every song I've ever played on Spotify through um, Last FM. They have this, I forget what the feature is called, but it'll actually give you the timestamps of when you played that. So I'm using that data, hitting Spotify's API to get uh, all the different attributes about a specific song so I could see if, you know, I was listening to some type of really crazy music at 3 a.m. or like when I first woke up. So it's pretty cool to see the trends in my uh, listening history. I want to speak to that a little bit more. So <laughs> like I've seen people use their Spotify data with like even their um, their like Fitbit or Whoop data and like combined it to see like why they were listening to certain music based on like how tired they were, the stress levels or if they were exercising uh, just from doing this project what's the big thing that you've learned? Uh, just mostly that I have a really interesting habit of when I find a new song, I, I already knew this, but to see it in data, I listen to it like 30 times within a day. So when I find something new, it's like, oh, I got to listen to it all day, all the time. And then I often like forget about it for a few weeks and then go back to it. I'm very uh, habitual with that. It's, it's kind of interesting to see. That's what I do. Just a loop for like two hours. And then I never yeah. hear the song again. <laughs> That's exactly right. And one more I'm going to throw at you. Yeah. Uh, what artist showed up on your Spotify wrapped that you 
were embarrassed by or like, oh, dang it. I didn't think that would be my top five. I was Ariana Grande. I love Ariana Grande. I just didn't want her in my top five. I'm not embarrassed at all. Uh, the biggest <laughs> move up from year over year has been uh, Fred again. Fred again, I'm a big fan. He's kind of uh, blown up in the scene, in the electronic music scene. I guess really over the last year and a half. But I've been, he went from nowhere on my radar to number two in, the, in this year. Well, we took this discussion from specific data questions <laughs> to a little bit of Spotify and music. I'm Love happy it. about it. I hope you're happy about it too. Thank you very much for participating, and I will talk to you soon in the OA community. Awesome. Thanks, Parker. See ya.